So let's say we're here and we're flying towards Big B. We're going to cross over the VOR and we're going to use the Navigation 1 radio to fly on the outbound radial 016. We're right on course. This right here tells us flight level 240. So we're going to be at 24,000 feet flying away from Big B on a heading of 016. We're going to keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, and what do we got here? Uh, this is the Graham VOR. So while we're heading towards Graham, we're going to be intercepting also the 111.6 Graham VOR, and we're going to be intersecting. We're going to be inter intercepting Graham VOR on the 198 radial, which is basically coming in from the south. 180 degrees is due south, so 198 is about 200 degrees. So there we go. We're going to cross over there. And by the time we get to here, we want to be close to about 4,000 feet. So we're descending, descending, descending. We're at 4,000 feet. We just crossed over the Graham VOR. And we're pretty close to Nashville. So now we want to head... Uh, outbound from Graham at 066 degrees. Dun, 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 flying away. Just fly outbound and we're heading towards Nashville. And the Nashville VOR is 114.10. This brings us into the Nashville area. That's all we want to know. So we're close to Nashville and uh, all this stuff doesn't matter. Okay, that's all we have to know for this sectional chart. This, this brings us close to Nashville. We're descending. We're pretty close. We're where we want to be. That previous sectional chart won't tell us about any runway information or anything like that, right? But we want to intercept from the south. So on our flight plan, which is why it's important to come up with everything in a flight plan before you fly. Uh, let's look for a uh, intersection. Okay, uh, this is uh, a basic map of Nashville, Tennessee, and here's the International Airport here. This long line here, this narrow triangle, is the ILS approach to runway to right. Uh, what I circled here is the Atkins intersection. And if you look down here on the chart for the glide slope, you'll see that Atkins intersection is the first GPS intersection that you will intercept on the approach to runway to right. This intersection on the chart shows us that we have to be at 5,000 feet. We also have to set the course needle to 021. This is the uh, the actual heading of the runway. And when you program your course needle to 021, when you, if you want to land on the airport using the autopilot, this will make sure that you actually pretty much head straight down the runway. So the next intersection that we have to cross over is L-O-U-D-N, uh, which is 11.9 or 12 miles away from the airport, basically. The last one we were at, Atkins, is 15 miles away. So this gives us plenty of time at this nice altitude. We're going to come in a very nice, gentle um, descent to the runway. So a couple miles away, we're going to be at L-O-U-D-N, still on 21 degrees at 4,000 feet. And U-N-I-V-E, which is 8.7, we're going to be at 3,000 feet. So as you're crossing these different intersections, you'll be manually uh, setting your altitude to the appropriate heading. So here we go. On this same chart here, you'll be able to see the same intersections.
Atkins right here, uh, L-O-U-D-N right about here, and you'll be able to see that you're actually not very far away from the airport at all. So going back to the chart here, this is what you really need to know when you really start your descent. UNIVE, 3,000 feet, uh, when assigned by ATC intercept glide path at 3,000, 4,000, or 5,000. So what we saw on the previous chart was that we had to be at 4,000 feet at that VOR. That's why ATC will give you different instructions on um, descend to 5,000 feet, descend to 4,000 feet. That's where you'll find the, the, uh, the appropriate information. 2,500 feet is when you really start to get onto the glide slope while you'll be using um, your autopilot, your uh, approach uh, function in the autopilot. The airplane will actually guide the airplane down onto the runway. 2,500 feet and you'll be 7.2 miles away at the Skaggs intersection. Now you're 4.2 miles away, you're coming a lot closer. Uh, so when you have the course set incorrect and you're at the right altitude, this makes it a lot easier for the autopilot to actually guide the plane onto the runway. If you are at 6,000 feet or 7,000 feet and you're flying over, there's no way that your autopilot would be able to guide your airplane onto the runway. You would overshoot the runway. And that's why you actually have to follow these charts precisely with the correct heading, the correct altitude, and that's how it works. That's why every every approach and every landing using the autopilot is, is smooth. So, uh, Going back to the time when you were actually really learning about aviation and flying, this goes to show you that you really don't have to look out the window to be able to know how to fly the plane, and it'll actually land right on the runway without even looking out the window, generally. So follow the charts, follow the checklists, and you should have a smooth landing every time.